All right, guys, check this out. I'm really excited to bring you the first five track spikes ever made by Nike. These shoes came out in the early 1970s. Nike became its own company in 1972, and in 1973, they started selling track spikes. And remember the early history of Nike? They were selling Onitsuka Tiger shoes at track meets. Phil Knight was doing that. He partnered up with Bill Bowerman. They decided to make their own shoes, and these are the first five ever Nike track spikes with a vintage ad from a 1975 magazine. I want to walk you through them one by one. So it says back there, Nike Spikes. Let's bring the Greek goddess of victory out here, and I want to show you these shoes up close and personal. So we'll break out the pre-Montreal. The ad says, pre-Montreal, Nike's premier racing shoe, patented suede and swoosh upper, gives you a glove-like fit for use on synthetic tracks only, a favorite among distance runners, $39.95. So this shoe was about 40 bucks, Using the inflation calculator, that's about $175 today. Let's have a look underneath here at those track spikes. You'll notice six spikes on the back, and then check out these little rubber nodules back here on the heel. This is an early example of the pre-Montreal. We know because it has a stitched toe. Later models had a one-piece toe, but we also know because the Nike doesn't have the registered trademark on the tongue. Remember the very early Nikes? don't have a little R on the tongue. And as we walk through these shoes, we'll look at some of the differences. But there we have that early cursive, lowercase Nike logo with no registered trademark. These shoes were made for Steve Prefontaine to run in the Montreal Olympics. He tragically passed away and didn't get to wear these shoes in the games. Let's have a look at the next shoe, the Americas. Boom, look at that beautiful red nylon shoe with a white swoosh. So it says the red nylon swoosh fiber shoe in the most popular of Nike spikes. So it's the most popular, how crazy is that? This lightweight shoe has hundreds of tiny cones on the sole for sure traction on any surface, and this one was $29.95. So let's have a look at some of those cones underneath here. You'll notice only four track spikes here, but these are those little cones that we're talking about. The early innovations at Nike had a lot to do with the outsoles. Remember the waffle innovation was all about gripping the ground. Here we have these tiny cones on the America's track spike. Beautiful. And remember earlier we were looking at the lowercase Nike font on the pre-Montreal. Here's an uppercase Nike font, and there you have that little registered trademark on there. So this one would have come out a little bit later. Nike registered their trademark in early 1974, so shoes from then on would have the little registered trademark, whereas the early, early ones do not. Let's have a look at the third shoe in the ad. The Interval, pop it on there. So the Interval, a popular training and racing spike. It features a sponge rubber heel wedge to protect against heel bruise and Achilles strain. So right here is that sponge rubber. It says popular training shoe. Don't be confused, this was not a cross training shoe. It refers to training for races. And we'll look underneath here and you'll see again four Nike spikes. The spikes will clearly show you that it wasn't a cross trainer. Cross training shoes came around way later in 1987 and they were made for multiple sports. But all these shoes are track spikes, so they're meant for running. The Interval right here, a very, very nice shoe. Crazy that they're already concerned with protecting the heel and also the Achilles. Early innovations over at Nike. And this one was $26.95. So as we go through this ad, we're gonna start off with the most expensive at pre-Montreal and we'll work our way down to the least expensive, which is the white leather Nova. Let's get the Interval out of the way. Work our way to the next shoe. This is the Canada Quick Four. A lot of people just called it the Quick Four. Look how crazy that swoosh is on the shoe. This is the first of all of these shoes that was made in the USA. Actually, it was made in Puerto Rico. The Pre-Montreal, the Americas, and the Interval all came from Japan. But anyway, here we have the Canada Quick Four. It's called the Quick Four because again, it has just those four spikes on there. All of these shoes have four spikes with the exception of the Pre-Montreal that had six spikes. And then the later editions of the Pre-Montreal even had seven or eight spikes. Let's have a look here. You'll see a lowercase Nike font with a registered trademark. So this happened 
after the lowercase one with no registered trademark, but before the ones that would later have the capital boldface Nike letters. Very, very cool. We'll also look back here and we're gonna see that there's nothing written on the heel of this shoe. And I'd like to actually go back and compare the heels of the other shoes. The Interval right here has a big, bold Nike on the back. The Americas also the big, bold Nike. And the Pre-Montreal, because it's an early one, says nothing, but the later ones also said Nike. And then let's have a look at the last shoe in the ad, the Nova. This one's white and leather. The first one that's white and the first one that's leather. Most of these other shoes are nylon. Of course, the Pre-Montreal has some suede on there. Notice the similarities between the swoosh on the Nova and the swoosh on the Canada Quick 4. Both of these shoes were made in the USA. And actually, even beyond the swooshes, the uppers of these shoes are so similar. Again, the Nova has the four spike plate on there. It says nothing on the back. And the description for this shoe, full leather uppers, foam tongue, padded heel collar are features of this shoe. It's ideal for young runners. And incidentally, the Canada Quick 4 was available in sizes three through 13. So it looks like way back in the early days, the Canada Quick 4 and the Nova were the shoes made for women and kids, and these other shoes seem to be just men's models. Anyway, there's one last shoe on the ad, and it's the Oregon Waffle. It says the shoe that combines the traction of a spike with the cushioning of a flat. It's the ideal shoe for interval training and distance running. So let's break out a vintage pair of Oregon Waffles. This is one of my favorite shoes in the collection. It's in the University of Oregon colors. Remember, Nike was started by Phil Knight and Bill Bowerman at Hayward Field at the University of Oregon. This shoe is completely perfect. Look at that waffle outsole right there. Anyway, it's been a real pleasure walking you through the first five track spikes, the early history of running, and the Oregon waffle.